milling about with Linus Roach and he's starring in the apology. It is so good to see you. Nice to see you too. I see you've got a Christmassy background there. I'm celebrating the holidays with you. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So the last time I actually saw you was at lunch. Do you remember? I do. No, but remind me where it was. I remember meeting you, but where were we? So we were at the Empire Diner in New York City. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Which is now still exists, but in different hands now completely. I know. Back in the day when we actually spent time together. Yeah, but also back in the day when it was a real diner, you know, it was really just eggs over easy and a, and a pint of ale, you know, so now it's all kind of highfalutin and swanky food. This is so true. This is such a different Christmas movie, Linus. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Yeah. But I really enjoyed it. So yeah. the first thing I want to talk to you about right off the bat are your fight scenes. So so here you are with Anna Gunn mm. and she's beating the crap out of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so walk me through it. <laughs> well, I mean, um, uh, my character deserved it, the firstly. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was great, the idea of the movie and then what Ali had set up as the conflict and then the fact that it turns into physical violence is kind of, you know, fun and uh, sort of righteous in a way. But yeah, we had uh, a good stunt director and we figured it out. And and to be honest, I mean, it's probably the one area where if we'd had a bit more time, we could have gone a bit further with some of it because, you know, there were more elaborate sequences than... You know, fights on a on a movie can take a lot of time, as anybody knows in the industry. So, uh, I haven't seen the film, so I don't know how the fights have turned out. But uh, it was I I enjoy a good fight on on camera, and there's a certain skill involved in it all. But yeah, we had I think it was just fun having a playing a character. I think gets uh, I get burnt in the face, uh, shot in the leg, um, hit in the head with a hockey stick. Uh, I get knifed at one point. Yeah, so it, and the, you know, just multiple, a hit on the head with a lamp. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 I sort of have quite a few contusions by the end of it. So do you have a safe word that you use, like just in case something might horribly go wrong? Oh yeah, I mean, you're always supervised with stunt guys and there's always, you know, a safety. And, and, and most of all, you just make sure that everyone's clear this is what we're doing and we're cutting here. It's just this beat, you know, cause it's, it's a magic trick making fights work. You know, rarely do you get to see a whole fight in one shot, you know, occasionally it can be done, but it takes a lot of skill. So really it's just the clarity of the fight, the stunt coordinator, make sure the actors are with it. And, and also there's a couple of sequences there where there is a double involved. So it's not always me, yeah. Did you did you ever come close though to getting a little nick or 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 a jab? Not in this one because I think you know I'm old enough, I've been around enough to know um, I'm not going to let that happen. And it's happened to me in the past. I got I got taken out by a stunt guy once. He was a, a young, inexperienced guy, and he he connected full force and knocked me out. Where uh, was this? It was on the Isle of Man in about 2000 and whatever, three or four or five. I can't remember. But yeah. And um, unfortunately, it wasn't even on camera. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a precarious business, but, you know, it's part of the fun of movie making. Yeah, absolutely. What was it like working with a first time writer director? Well, Ali, um, she approached me for this role. Uh, she wrote me this beautiful letter you know it's kind it's very I felt very honored and it's very humbling when somebody comes after you and you know you're the only person she's come after she you know normally I'm the person that's like six people have turned it down and then I might get off with it this was like she chose me wanted me to do it and she knew my body of work and obviously felt that you know what I'd done already said to her that I could play it and then we had a discussion and and I felt immediately that I could trust her as a person to work with. And uh, more importantly, maybe I trusted her writing. I trusted the structure of the script. It was very strong in its thesis, 
and its antithesis and its themes. And she'd really done a very good job of grounding it. So I felt safe in that regard. Very Absol safe. Absolutely. And you actually shot in places where there really was no snow. <laughs> in Los Angeles. Yes. <laughs> yes, we did. And so, so how fun is that to like know that you're shooting a Christmas movie and it's like 90 degrees outside? Well, we're, I was a bit worried at one point because my, my character never even takes his coat off. And I thought, oh, my God, you know, is this could be a nightmare, you know, inside a house. But actually, we were lucky. It was spring and it wasn't too crazy hot. And they did bring a bit of air conditioning in when we needed it. So we were looked after. It wasn't it wasn't too bad. And, you know, the, the house, it's night. So it was um, blacked out and we put the Christmas decorations in there and yeah, you just believe it. Right. You just believe it. We were also able to shoot pretty much in order because we were in at one location so we could shoot in chronological order and also because i have so many injuries it would have been a nightmare to keep going back and forth can you imagine just the makeup alone taking it off and reapplying it with so it, it actually worked for the whole production and it's great as an actor when you can tell a story in chronological order so what was your favorite makeup oh i like the full monty at the end when the guys just got absolutely beaten to a pulp and I love working with the makeup designer. She was so skilled and she made the best blood ever. It's so realistic, the blood. I loved her blood. Um, uh, but Best blood ever. I love that. That's a great title. Ever. And she just did such a good job. And it was fun every day to talk about, well, what's the burn going to look like now? And how far is this wound? Is this starting to congeal? You know, it's, it was great fun doing all of that stuff. I actually like that. <laughs> And I, you're right now. You've got salt and pepper hair, so they've obviously. I, I'd say it's salt. Them. It's more salt. There's very little <laughs> pepper in there. <laughs> so they put some hair dye in you for the. No, 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 no. This is this is how I was. Yeah, yeah. This is it. This is it. No hair dye. Yeah. Or oh natural. Maybe it's just the lighting. Sometimes well, it's very snowy here where I am, and there's a lot of white light projected at me. Maybe I look whiter now. Than I did then, but no, it's pretty much the same person. Where are you? I'm in a little town uh, in down in the Hudson Valley, about an hour and twenty out of Manhattan. Oh yeah, you're close. So you're close to the city. Close enough, yeah. There's there's my dog. The plumber's just coming to fix the heating, so um, my dog's getting off. Oh, uh, he can come Thank on you. if you want. <laughs> No, you're making a big Ferrari there. Anyway, yes. He doesn't want to come on the show. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, no. There's, there's another film you did this year that I absolutely loved, My Policeman. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. So, and I have like such a huge crush on Harry Styles. I have to admit, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, he's great. He's great. No, I was very, very flattered and very honored to be part of that movie. It's a great story and... Uh, hey you know if i'm gonna i get to play the older harry styles I, i'll take it and he was a delightful young man got to spend a little bit of time with him because we had some sequences that we had to cross over and and we talked a little bit about the approach to the role and um i just think he's um he's not just a a, a great talent he's a remarkable human being i just love he his seems people. really yeah. nice yeah. yeah where he's coming from and what he's giving back to the world he's very conscious and uh he's very gen it's very authentic it's not an act it's who he is you know so that comes through i think and uh yeah i'm very proud of him i think he did a great job in the movie it's really good it's really good so i want to take you back to the beginning a little bit uh so you started in carnation street and you did law and order which are like both the same kinds of you know, rites of passage for actors, right? In a way. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, Coronation Street, which a lot of your viewers and listeners probably don't know about that show, right? I mean, that's well, you a... could get it on like BBC Box, Brit Box, or something like that. I or think. ITV, ITV, probably. But yeah, yeah, I mean, that's just the longest running show in the history of television. And my father is still on it he's the only original surviving member from the original cast he's 90 wow. he's 90 years old he's just about to receive his obe from wow. king charles next week and uh 
he's still working on the show. He started in 1962 and he's still going. Just, and you and your brother were on that show, yeah? So I did it. I went on as a kid. And in fact, they asked me to be a permanent uh, fixture on it as a kid. But my parents were smart and just said, look, you know, you got all your life to be, be an actor. Just get on with your childhood and go to school. And then when I left drama school, they actually asked me again to come back. Because I did do a little stint as his kid when I was about 11 years old playing his son. And then they invited me to join again uh, when I left drama school. And, it's, you know, it was very, I was very flattered, but I didn't, I, I wanted to experiment. I wanted to do lots of different things. So it wasn't the time. And then in 2009, I think, uh, we just came up with this idea, wouldn't it be fun if they wrote a story for me and my brother to be on the show? And they did. They they bought the whole idea. But I we didn't quite realize what that took because the show's enormous. You know, it's like a cast of 50 regular actors and yeah. they're shooting every single day and there's like five shows a week. So we sort of thought we could do a bottle episode where it'd be just me and my brother. Maybe we kidnap my dad. And so it wasn't. It took a long it took a long time to work a story in. And so we had a fun little, we had a great time together, but it, it wasn't such a great story, I don't think. But yeah, and then my brother went on and did a bit more and who knows, maybe he'll go back one more time, but it would be, you know, I'm very proud of my dad. It's amazing legacy he's he's left, be, he's, you know, left behind. He's still sort of living the legacy of what he's done, which is unparalleled. Oh, absolutely. What a, what a gorgeous thing also to sort of act with him as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, did he want you to be an actor? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if anybody wants their children to be actors. I mean, both my parents were actors and they were they were both very kind of cautious and wanting me to have an education as a backup. But they didn't discourage me. I mean, they spent a bit of time just telling me how hard it was going to be and the rejection and all of that. And so I suppose I was prepared for it. Um but they, in the end, were very encouraging and very proud and supportive. It's a good thing you are successful because. Oh uh, yeah, I suppose yeah. I mean, I've been. I still feel very lucky that I get to do something I love doing. I really, I love it more and more. Actually, I don't love it less. I love it more. And uh, as long as people occasionally you get jobs like the apology, you know, something that comes along that really challenges you and pushes an edge for me you know I had to go places I haven't been in a while and find a level of trust and abandon and freedom and uh, I love that you know and I, I love the fact that people sometimes think oh yeah he's the guy from Law and Order and then they don't realize that it's the same guy who did Vikings or you know the or the guy who was in Mandy so the, I, I like the fact that I, I can't be pigeonholed yeah it. you're like a chameleon very much so mm, I don't know yeah. if yeah, but pe people literally don't even know. <laughs> it's the same guy. Yeah. You mean they don't know where they've seen you when they've seen yeah, you? Yeah, no, some people go, well, just think, you know, they don't, but what, you you did, you were in that and that? You know, you don't put it together, you know, so. I think it's also being a Brit and playing American roles and playing British roles, so. But anyway, look, it's it's great. I, I love doing it and uh, I'm happy to keep doing it as long as people ask me to. So really quick, I have this little fun game I like to play. It's called Mythbusters. Mm. Is it true that you went on a spiritual journey to India and left the business completely? Yes, it is. Ah. So you can't bust that myth. No. <laughs> <laughs> the only part of the myth that isn't true is I think people used to think that I'd gone away to India for two years. I took a two-year break from acting but my trip to India was probably about four months and then I went back again the following year so that that's the only myth part of it yeah and do you still practice what you learn there I mean in many ways I mean that became um, part of who I am and it's part of my daily contemplation I don't meditate regularly but I'm I just got very fascinated and I suppose at the time I was lucky in that I had a lot of success and and I felt I was a bit too neurotic and caught up in the business and my identity as an actor. And, and I just wanted to question it. And it's dangerous to question things because they can all fall apart. But it's also very powerful because it can give you a deeper sense of who you are and why you're here. So, yes, it is a huge part of my life. And I thank my younger self for making me do it. 
Well, speaking of spirituality, what are your Christmas plans this season? So my wife and I are off to London next week. We're going to have a few days with my dad and my brother and my sister there in London. And then we're going to Cambridge where her folks are, her brother and niece and nephew. And then we're off to India again, but not to do a spiritual retreat. This time we're going to, we both got COVID a few months back and we did not have fun with it at all. It's not fun. I don't recommend it, right? It's just not, no, there's better things to have and to do. Yeah. Um, but we've always wanted to do one of these Ayurvedic cleanses. It's called a Panchakarma and it's a three week program and they basically detox your whole system. And uh, we just thought, okay, now's the time. Now is the time. So uh, we've made the commitment and I still can't believe we're doing it because it's like every day is about getting everything ready to go. But that's that's Christmas and New Year for you wow that's an exciting holiday really what about you what are you doing oh going to my brother's house and yelling at each other i think <laughs> <laughs> sounds like sounds like christmas exactly <laughs> so what do you want audiences to come away with after they see the apology uh, maybe a bit of catharsis uh, of of actually uh, a female revenge story of some ilk um, also, just I think uh, it, it's a very intriguing idea of what it takes to get someone to face themselves and be accountable and responsible. Yeah. And that's a really interesting dynamic. And who's to say at the end of the journey, without giving too much away, whether Jack has really faced anything or if it's just a momentary thing or and I just thought it makes you think about maybe what images are we holding up about ourselves that we won't let go and be vulnerable to. So uh, I just think it's good drama as much as anything. So maybe it'll have some discussion points afterwards. I'll be interested to see what people take away. Ah, uh, wonderful. Linus, have a happy, happy, happy holiday. It's lovely to see you again. And, you too. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, we'll meet up again at the New Empire and have a have a, a rather smart lunch there. Rather than oh, a... <laughs> I'm in. I would love it. <laughs> have fun in India. Thank you. I will. I will. Well, I, I don't know how fun the detox <laughs> part is going to be. It's probably going to be quite brutal. <laughs> I think. I think the first two weeks are pretty intense, and then you sort of start recovering. I mean, <laughs> we'll have a brutal time in India. Thank you. I will have a brutal. You have a great time at your brother's. Okay. No. Take care. Bye. Bye. Always new. Always refreshing. Always candid. Always billing about. Robin Milling delivers what celebrities are saying to you. To you. To you.